Okay, hello, and we're going to get the camera set up there again. Hopefully that's all good. Um, I'm you know, obviously not going to post this uh, right after I post part one, but this will be part two of me going through my DVD binder and recommending some movies and talking about movies. Um, I hope these are interesting and not too just god-awful boring. Um, so we left off in the letter C. <laughs> I didn't get too far in the first one. Um, Okay, here we go. Um, well, you know, you can ask for a better start to a discussion about films with Casablanca. Now, how many of you have seen Casablanca? You know, is this just like an old movie to you guys? You know, because I know most of you are younger than I am. I'm 39. Most of my subscribers are younger than me. Um, have you seen Casablanca? It is an amazingly good movie. Um, in fact, it's a movie that, you know, it's not just like like the next movie I'm going to talk about is Citizen Kane and Citizen Kane for some people is like medicine or something it's like they know it's good for them and they have to watch it etc but Casablanca is actually a, a stellarly entertaining film um, superb performances, great dialogue just so well put together I took a screenwriting class one weekend um, in Los Angeles and we dissected the script for Casablanca, um, and it's just, it's just, it's just holds up so well. And uh, it was such a happy accident that it all came together like it did. But um, Humphrey Bogart, amazing, amazing actor. I just watched The Treasure of the Sierra Madre about two months ago. I'd never seen it, and he's great in that. But just you know, Casablanca, you got to see it if you haven't seen it. Okay, and like I just mentioned, um, Citizen Kane. Now, for some of you, this would be like, I don't know, like an English class when they made you read, you know, some Faulkner or Hemingway or, you know, Pride and Prejudice or something. Um, but it really is a, an amazing, amazing movie. Um, there's a reason why, at age 25, Orson Welles was called a genius. Um, if you see the movie, and if you know anything about movies, um, the things that him and Greg Tolan, the, the cinematographer, the director of photography, did in that movie are just amazingly uh, ahead of their time. And the story structure and the acting and, uh, you know, the way he ages from, you know, basically a young guy in his 20s all the way up until, you know, the old guy that dies famously saying Rosebud. Um, it, it's, it, it really isn't some kind of you know pill that you should have to swallow it's it's a very entertaining movie and it's got so much in it that you can go back and look at again and again I can't recommend it highly enough and the two disc version that I have comes with this great documentary about the battle over Citizen Kane and uh, you know what went into the making of it and how he pissed off the guy it's modeled after Randolph uh, Hearst and uh, yeah just fascinating fascinating bit of film history uh, the next movie in here is The Commitments. Great, great uh, musical, uh, well not musical, but music filled film set in Ireland. Love the soundtrack, have that. The next film in here is The Color Purple uh, by Steven Spielberg, based of course on the Alice Walker um, Pulitzer Prize winning novel. Um, God, I cried the first time I saw The Color Purple. Um, there's some really great heavy scenes in that movie. Um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, uh, I'm sure most of you are uh, into Japan and Asia and stuff and have seen that amazing film. I'm such a huge, huge John Woo fan, um, when Hard Boiled and The Killer and those early Chow Yun Fat movies were coming out, I was so into John Woo, um, that, uh, you know, I would see anything with Chow Yun Fat, and that's initially what attracted me to Crouching Tiger. But Ang Lee made an amazing, amazing movie. Um, my favorite Christmas movie, Die Hard. No, um, it does take place around Christmas in it. But uh, I love Die Hard, and it's in here. Um, what else? Dark City, uh, an Alex Proyas film. Alex Proyas made the original Crow movie with uh, Brandon Lee, who tragically passed away while making it. And Dark City has Jennifer Connelly in it, who is an actress who I feel is probably one of the most gorgeous women ever to walk the earth. And um, 
got Kiefer Sutherland in it. It's just very, very interesting, interesting movie. And the commentary track by film critic Roger Ebert is also fascinating if you're into listening while you watch the movie. Um, what next? Escape from New York. I was talking in the first part about um, uh, Big Trouble in Little China and The Thing. Um, but for me, John Carpenter and Kurt Russell, Snake Plissken. If you don't know who Snake Plissken is, you got to see Escape from New York. It's just so, so good. It's got so much great quotable dialogue in it, and they're thinking of remaking it or something. I, God, I hope they don't. I hate it when they take a good, good movie like that, even a good foreign film, and remake it into an English movie. Um, Fight Club. You know, I probably don't have to convert many of you there. Um, you know, Brad and Ed, you know, and David Fincher. I mean, I just watched Seven again. I hadn't seen it probably in like five years. God, what a great movie that is. And Fight Club, uh, just another amazing movie. I've heard the newest one with him uh, that he directed, uh, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, not so great. Um, but I still want to see it because I do really respect him. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a movie certainly that I was too young to see uh, when it first came out. I think Fast Times came out in 1984. Um, and so I was probably only 14, and it was, of course, very R-rated at the time. Um, so I didn't see it on the big screen, but of course, um, video players, when I was a teenager, started to come into, you know, there was beta, and then there was VHS. And I know I saw it on video, I'm sure, at some friend's house. Um, during high school, and uh, such a funny, funny film. Sean Penn is amazingly hilarious in that movie. Um, First Blood, you know, say what you will about Stallone. I'm a, I'm a Stallone fan. Not so much for some of the over-the-top stuff, but some of the other stuff he's done. The first Rocky movie and this first Rambo movie, both amazingly good films. Um, this, you know, is actually a very good, well-acted action picture, you know, way before the you know, the over-the-top second movie that got, you know, caught up in the Reagan era. <laughs> the next movie I'm going to recommend in the F's here is Free Enterprise, and there's not any kind of art on this disc to really sell it, but um, it's a movie made by a couple guys that I've gotten to know through uh, the San Diego Comic-Con, and it's a movie with William Shatner about a Star Trek fanatic um, played by the guy who went on to become famous for the TV show Will and Grace in America. And in the movie, there's this amazingly funny scene about he's turning 30, the, the main character. And of course, if you know anything about science fiction movies, Logan's Run, there's a famous uh, science fiction movie. My very favorite science fiction film of all time is called Logan's Run. And they do this kind of parody thing in that where he's running to get away from Last Day. And uh, it endeared me to that movie, and I rewatched it many times. And there's just so many references to science fiction films in the movie that if you're a fan, you'll enjoy it for that alone. Um, so I'm um, almost done again, but moving into the G's, we have Ghost World, really good movie based on a comic book that I really like. Good performances. Uh, Gladiator, don't have to say much about that. The Godfather, I mean, come on. The Godfather 1 and 2, you know, don't worry about 3, an amazing pair of films. Um, they're actually going to re-release them um, here in Japan soon, and I hope to go see them. And the movie that I mentioned last time that I watched with my father, I'm a huge Steve McQueen fan, The Great Escape. Got to be my all-time favorite war-related, you know, associated with a war movie, even though it's not really about war. Um, if you haven't seen it, got to see it. Um, last G movie then, before I get into the H's, I'll mention that's in here, is everybody's favorite Bill Murray movie. Well, you know, so many Bill Murray movies are great. Groundhog Day. <laughs> Love Groundhog Day. That's another infinitely watchable, much repeatable watchable movie. Okay, that was part two. Part three's coming up. Bye.